Well, hello, and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. Let's try this again. There's no way you would know this, but this is actually the third time I have tried to start this Friday Reads video. I'm doing my usual thing of recording a Friday Reads video on Friday and posting it on a Saturday. If you hear rustling, it's because my buddy Guinness is walking around next to me chewing on his uh, toy stuffed chicken. So <laughs> if you hear rustling, that's what it is. Anyway, we're going to do it this time. Uh, basically, the week, my reading life has still been a mess. Um, We'll get into that toward the end. Uh, but in the, the world of politics, at least one good thing happened. The election had the result that I, I kind of wanted. So, you know, we'll, that's that's good. Uh, it's, things are still a mess. It's amazing how you can have a good result and things are still a mess. But I'm not really going to talk about politics too much. Just to say that, you know, it's still been stress. Uh, the pandemic is not doing well at all. No, case numbers keep going up. And the transition is looking awkward, to say the least. So, who oh boy, <laughs> it's going to be a long two months before things start getting sorted out. And uh, all we can do is hold on, keep being safe and reasonable, and uh, hope for the best. Thanksgiving is coming, and I hope you have safe plans for you and your family. Uh, we had been hoping that we could do Thanksgiving outside and be socially distant with some friends in town, but it snowed again. Again, this weekend, we got about four or five inches, which means it's not looking likely. So we are going to be doing a food exchange with our friend. Um, we'll drop some food off at her house. She'll drop, she'll give us some food that she prepares, and then we'll return to our respective homes and maybe do a Zoom during dinner so we can still get that little togetherness aspect, but that way we are not taking undue risks with our health and with the health of our community. So I hope you have similar plans that you are working on as well. Anyway, I did want to talk because the uh, National Book Award announcement is coming up. The Booker Prize announcement is coming up. But both of them are next week on the 18th and 19th. I believe the National Book Award is on the 18th. And then the Booker Prize is announced on the 19th. So it's Wednesday and Thursday back to back. So We'll talk about that, but first I want to do a little bit of an update to my end of year TBR. I will link the video down below where I kind of worked out what my end of year TBR is going to be. I have an update. So I had been planning to do a buddy read of Beloved by Toni Morrison with Amelia Reeds, who is a commenter. She and I did a buddy read of Song of Solomon at the beginning of the year, and actually, actually we're currently buddy reading Shuggy Bane, and we had been planning to end the year with Toni Morrison as well. Well. We're probably not going to be doing that. We're going to bump this to 2021. So I had labeled Beloved by Toni Morrison a must-read for me in 2020. And I'm actually updating it so it's going to get bumped to 2021. So it is no longer on my end-of-year 2020 TBR. And again, I'll link the video down below. Just if you go to watch it, understand that this one is no longer a must. It is going to be bumped to 2021 just for, you know... She has a lot going on. I have a lot going on. So we both agreed it would probably be better to revisit in 2021. So this is still coming, but we'll get to it. Now, in terms of the National Book Award, I am actually... So I finished Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam, which is one of the finalists. I think it's one that has a really good shot. I've heard a lot of people say that they like A Children's Bible by Lydia Millet, or Millet. It doesn't... I... <laughs> I'm not feeling like I'm very interested in reading it, so I'm kind of holding off. Maybe, depending how the book, the National Book Award goes, I might end up getting interested. But right now, it's feeling like something I can pass. I think the front runners are really going to be "Leave the World Behind" and "The Secret Life of Church Ladies" by Disha Filia, and I think Ruman Alam has the edge. Shuggy Bain is another contender for it, and I'm halfway, most of the way through, actually, and I really love it. The part that concerns me for the National Book Award is that this is a very Scottish book. Douglas Stewart lives in Brooklyn now, but it is a very Scottish book, and for the National Book Award, obviously, the, the nation is America, so it doesn't feel like your traditional winner of the National Book Award. And they have gotten out of that a little bit in the past, like the uh, Europe Central one of a couple of years ago. I believe that was the title. I could be wrong. But it feels like this would be a major outlier for them. And I, that for that reason alone, I'm thinking that it's getting a little bit pushed out of the head, the leaders of the pack. So 
if it does win, I'm going to be very pleasantly surprised because, like I said, I am loving this book a lot. And we'll get to that when I get to the currently reading, por the actual Friday Reads portion of my Friday Reads video. So I would be very happy if it does win. I just, I just can't see it as something that is likely to happen. So I think the most likely contenders are then The Secret Lives of Church Ladies, which I really want to read. This is also in my end of 2020 TBR, but it's on my options pile. And Leave the World Behind, which I read. I feel like I should clarify something, though, because when I talked about this in my, I think it was my October wrap-up, I talked about how I really should have waited until 2021 to read this book, because reading it right now in the middle, well, at that time, it was in the middle of the uh, lead up to the election, and we're still in, in uh, the pandemic's just ongoing. It felt like not a good time. I'm not one of those people, like a lot of people watched the movie Outbreak back in March and April. That's not me. <laughs> I am not the type of person who's going to be like, oh, there's an outbreak. I'm going to watch a movie about an outbreak. No, <laughs> no, that's not me. So this book is very much about a world that's kind of spinning out of control and how unprepared we are for that. And for that reason, it was very stressful for me to read. I do think it did some smart things. But the thing I don't think I was very clear about is that I talked about how I got very irritated with this book. And I really was getting irritated with it because it was stressing me out. But it wasn't just that. I do think... Ruman Alam has a lot of really clever observations that kind of reveal the shallow frailties of his characters. And in the beginning of the book, they feel really clever. They feel very lucid and, like I said, revealing. And in a way that not many authors approach their characters. He is very aware of all of their foibles and is eager to let you know about all of their foibles and the, the areas where they're a little shallow. As the book progresses, that gets a little bit annoying and some of the observations about them stop seeming revelatory and start seeming kind of like, oh, really? But again, I, by that point, I was really irritated by the book, mostly because of the stress. Now, does that mean that my patience just wore thin over time? Probably. But I felt like I should clarify that point. So there you go. For, to, to do with that whatever you will, because like I said, it's odds are if I had read this in 2021, that might not have bothered me. But I didn't read it in 2021. I read it now. So we'll see what happens with the National Book Award. These are the contenders in addition to A Children's Bible by Lydia Millay and Interior Chinatown by Charles Yu. I will be shocked if Interior Chinatown wins, but I, I think that is probably the one that it's safest to say will not win. Um, and maybe I'm just dismissing a children's Bible because I personally am not interested in reading it. But I would also love to hear what you think. Which of these books do you think deserves to win? Which of these books do you think will win? Honestly, I haven't read this one yet. I'd be very excited if this wins because I'm really looking forward to it. But based on... I, I'm thinking it's going to be hard for me to imagine a book taking over the should win title for me next to Shuggy Bane. But I think Leave the World Behind will win. So, but let me know what you think. I'm going to hold on to Shuggy Bane because now we're going to transition over to the Booker Prize, which is announced on the 19th. And Shuggy Bane is one of the finalists and gets his barking. <laughs> okay, I like Guinness out of the room. Hopefully it's all good now. So Shuggy Bane is one of the finalists for the Booker Prize as well. And it feels like this being a European novel, it fits much more within the wheelhouse of the prize. However, I still feel like it's probably going to be crowded out by the other books. This is the most quote-unquote traditional book of the Booker shortlist. I don't think that should be counted against it. However, I think a lot of people do count that against it. I still think it's a beautiful book. And if it wins, I'm going to be very happy. But I do think it's probably, just like in the National Book Award, going to be crowded out. If it wins, I'll be very happy. But we'll see. Other books in contention are Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshi. I am halfway through this book. I kind of put it aside because I needed to focus on, you know, my reading got a little bit stressed and I started falling behind. And I really needed to focus on this because it's a buddy read. And I, I will be getting back to this once we finish Shuggy Bane. I was really enjoying it. And I think it's a very good book. So if you're unfamiliar, Shuggy Bane is the story of um, 
Shuggy Bane is a boy growing up in Glasgow in the Thatcher era, and he is gay, and his, he, has, he has a mother who is an alcoholic, and it's about his childhood and him trying to protect his mother and coming of age uh, in the, the socio-political climate that he, got, he does and in the kind of religious anti-gay uh, climate that he does, and coming, kind of coming to terms with himself. I think it's a beautiful book. Burnt Sugar is also about a toxic relationship with a parent, but it's about a mother-daughter, and it's much so Shuggy is very much trying to support his mother and keep her sober and protect her this is much more on the toxic side and at the point of, of life where the characters are at the daughter is finding herself having to care for her mother as her mother is getting older and starting to potentially starting to lose her memory and it's also very much about memory and how memory shifts from person to person, and it colors your perception of the world. And I think that's very smart, and it does a lot of really deft maneuvering around that, and I'm very much looking forward to finishing it. If this wins, I would also be happy. So, there's Real Life by Brandon Taylor, which is a, uh, an LGBTQ college story about a black man at university dealing with prejudice about his gayness and his color. Uh, I, it is one of the books that I was most looking forward to reading in this year. I don't know if I'm going to get, think I'm going to get to it this year, but I would really like to. And again, if it wins, I would be very happy, even though I haven't read it. But um, I feel like it is likely to be crowded out by some of the others. There's also This Mournable Body by Tsitsi Dungaremga. This is the third book in a, ser a trilogy that has been going on for a very long time. Actually, the first one is Nervous Conditions, which I have a copy of that just happens to be sitting right here. And it kind of fo follows the journey of a woman in, I believe it's Nigeria, uh, and the sociopolitical journey of the country over those years. And significantly, Tsitsi Dungaremga was arrested for protest. So it feels like it would make sense if the Booker Committee wanted to throw her the prize as a sort of political statement. I've heard mixed things about both Nervous Conditions and This Mournable Body. I have not gotten around to reading them. I want to read Nervous Conditions first. Um, but I've heard, I have heard a lot of good things about it. I'm actually very interested in reading it, clearly, I, because I bought a copy. But it, it does feel like if this one wins, certain people are going to complain that it's more of a political statement than uh, fo something that focuses on the, the quality of the literature. However, you know, we'll see what happens. I do think that she's one of the authors to watch in this category because, or in this shortlist, because, you know, this is not my formal prediction video. <laughs> I, I'm not probably not going to do it. This is the closest I'm going to get to a formal prediction video for the Booker Prize. Um, if you want a more reasoned, thoughtful uh, prediction video. I'm sure Eric Carl Anderson will be doing one shortly. But, you know, so I don't know, I would be interested in seeing what his thoughts on this one are. But um, I think it has a really good chance, but I do feel like people are going to complain if it wins. And we'll have to see how that all pans out. Other ones are The Shadow King by Maza Mengisti. Honestly, I think that one might have the edge. Again, I do think people will complain if it wins, because it would feel like a political statement. It is about Ethiopia when it was uh, colonized by or invaded by Italians by, and Mussolini's army. And I think I've heard good things about it. I've also heard some negative things about it, but largely it seems positive. So I think that might have an edge in the competition, especially given the jury that we have for the shortlist. Um, but again, I'm not really doing a prediction video. If I had to predict, I would probably say The Shadow King. Just, you know, spitballing. I don't have any informed reason to say that really, just, you know, that's what I would say, basically. And then the final one is The New Wilderness by Diane Cook. Honestly, that one I am not feeling very interested in reading, although the audio of it is available on Scribd, so I might read it at some point. We'll see. But I'm generally not interested in reading it, and I don't, I, I, I maybe I'm wrong. It, it has happened before, it will happen again. I, I just don't see that one winning with this field. I think it's really going to come down to, I, I think this Mortable Body and the Shadow King have a bit of an edge, but I would not at all be surprised if Burnt Sugar creeps in there, or if Shuggy Bane pulls out, oh, come from behind, 
victory. Uh, real life, I think, I, I, again, I, I would not be surprised. I'd be happy for Brandon Taylor. But I think it is kind of getting pushed out by some of the other titles that are in contention. So what do you think will win the Booker and what do you think should win the Booker? I feel like I can't say what should win because I'm halfway, th more than halfway through Shuggy Bane and only halfway through Burnt Sugar and that's as much as I have read of the shortlist. I think Shadow King probably will win, but you know, I don't, I'd be very curious to hear what you think. So leave your comment down below and let me know. Moving into the actual Friday Reads portion of this, I am still doing my buddy read of Shuggy Bane. You guessed it. Uh, and we are, are, we've are we been making progress. We were supposed to try to speed up our progress this week, but I did not manage to do that. I only managed to get the three chapters that we were supposed to get in, and that was as far as I got. So I'm going to try again this weekend, and because we, we want to try to focus a little bit harder on the book and get through it a little bit faster. So we'll see. To be determined. But I'm really loving the book, and I, I feel like... I, I was going to save the conversation about it until the end, but I've already talked about it a lot. So I'm going to leave it at that and just tell you that this is ongoing. Very much loving it. Uh, Amelia is loving it. And uh, I can't wait to finish it and be able to talk a little bit more about it. And and I feel you should feel very special because I put the dust jacket back on just for you. I don't read books with the dust jacket on. I also started my buddy read of Love by Toni Morrison with Britta Bowler. We just started. Um, so we we read the introduction and chapter one so far, and that's it. And I think, and I mentioned this to Britta, I thought the introduction seemed a little too much like here's the exposition in a way that was uncharacteristically clumsy for Toni Morrison. And it, I, clumsy seems like a really harsh word. I don't think it was clumsy, but it did feel very much like, here's your exposition, and then the novel starts. And, but then once the, once you got into chapter one, I was completely captivated. And I, I think it's going to be interesting. I'm hesitant to say I'm loving it because I think there is potential for there to be things about this book that I don't like. But so far, it seems very good. And I really just fell into the rhythm of Toni Morrison. And I'm happy to be reading another one of her books. I made absolutely no progress on the audio <laughs> that I was listening to, which is The Left Hand of Darkness. I have a physical copy so I can hold it up for you. Uh, not at all. Did not listen to it at all. Not one little bit. So last week I was so stressed that I really wasn't listening to anything. This week I am still very stressed, but I have been just mainlining news podcasts like The Daily, uh, The Washington Post Reports, uh, NPR's Up First, you name it. And I uh, just driving myself a little crazy with that, but I'm actually consuming news again. But the problem is there's no room for anything else. So <laughs> I need to start getting back to The Left Hand of Darkness. This is another one of the books that I labeled as a must read for 2020 because I need to read a science fiction book. And because it is avail was available on audio immediately, I picked it up. Now I just need to actually get into it. That's the problem. The writing was really good in the, in the part that I did get to, but I barely got into it, so I don't feel really qualified to speak about it yet. Uh, the other books that are on my must list for 2020, and I still need to get to, are Nervous Conditions and the fifth season. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, that's what I've been doing this week. I would love to hear what you've been doing, what you've been up to, what you've been reading, what you've been loving, what you've been hating. By the way, the feedback from my last Friday Reads video was that people really like the Friday Reads, and wrap-ups are fine basically. So I will try to keep doing Friday Reads. I can't promise I'll manage to get them every week. I barely managed to get this one in. <laughs> barely. Um, so I can't promise I'll do them every week, but I will try to do them. I may still do the wrap-ups as I usually do, just because that way, I mean, you guys get to, you get to choose. <laughs> you don't have to watch every video I do. So if the wrap-up feels like it's stuff that you've already heard before, you don't have, you, I, you have my permission not to watch those. But I feel like I do kind of like, it helps me organize my thoughts at the end of the month to do a wrap up. So I, m I may end up doing both. We'll see. I'm going to try my best to do another 3k Q&A next week because I still have a lot of questions I need to get to. And we'll see how that goes. <laughs> no promises. <laughs> the world is still on fire. We'll see how everything goes. But anyway, as always, I really appreciate your time. And I will be back until next time. Happy reading.